everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Queue. I am super excited today to welcome Abby Armada. She's a customer support manager at Flickr. Abby, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Oh, thanks so much, Meredith. I'm really happy to be here. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. So uh, I guess we'll just jump right into our topic. So um, I know you kind of wanted to talk about unconventional starts in customer support. And I know, you know, I have seen it throughout working on this podcast. Everyone is coming from a different background. I've seen everything from journalism to teaching to uh, computer science. And it sounds like you came from retail. So can you just, let's start off by maybe um, having you just kind of walk us through your journey into support. Oh, sure. Okay. So like retail was literally like the step the last step before I got to support. Um, so I actually have a degree in film and TV costume design and uh, fashion design. So I have like two degrees in that. Um, I thought I was going to be like Ruth Carter from like Black Panther. I thought I was going to be like making costumes. And I did that for a little while. Like, you know, I helped out in wardrobe because I lived in LA. Um, but the entire time I was working in like art galleries and, and then I started working at Starbucks and I was just like thriving uh, working in sort of like retail customer facing roles. Like I would work there years at a time while trying to like support this career that I was trying to do. Um, and also I'm just always been really into tech. Like I coded my first website on GeoCities when I was like 11 and just kept up on, you know, the internet writ large while I was doing all of this, you know? And so that those were all of my interests. Like I liked solving problems. I liked being creative and I also really liked computers. So that's like all stuff I was doing while I was trying to do this costume design stuff. And then um, I started working for Starbucks, like I mentioned, and um, I moved from LA to New York because Starbucks can like, if you've been working there for a little while, they'll let you transfer anywhere. Right. So, uh, which is pro tip if anyone (laughs) if anyone ever wants to work at starbucks you can literally work anywhere if you've worked there for six months um and i moved to new york and did a little bit of costume design and then i was like i don't know if i really like the vibe of the film industry in new york it's a lot different and uh so i just was like my main job was like working at starbucks while doing like costume stuff on the side like making costumes for people and uh I became a supervisor at Starbucks. I was working there for like three and a half years. I like really loved it. I loved interacting with people. I loved when you work in a town like I do here on Long Island, there's just like regulars all of the time who you get to know their kids, you get to know their drinks. You just, you know, you get to sort of see them in their day to day and you become such a huge part of their day and they're sort of part of your day. And it's, it's like a weird thing, but it's pretty, it's pretty nice. You build like a little community. And, but then I was like, do I want to keep doing this? Do I keep want to like? Do I want to keep coming home smelling like frappuccino and milk and all of this? And my friend was like, "Hey, like we have openings at this startup. It's called eMusic. I think you'd be really good at it. Um, you love people, you, you know, and you're pretty good with tech and answering. <laughs> you know, like you're just pretty good at the internet." And I was like, sure, I'll try it out. And that's how I like sort of pivoted into support is just like, I think I was tired of being on my feet all day, but I loved people. And like, you do solve a lot of like customer problems when you work at Starbucks or any sort of retail environment. Like someone's unhappy. How do you make them happy? Something's broken. How do you pivot? You know? And so I think a lot of those skills, I just sort of, took with me into support and then I've been in support for almost a decade now after after that uh after where I've been so like no matter what you do like I can see so much of what I studied in school and what I was working on and all the retail problems I had to solve and like all the skills I had to gain I see them every day when I'm working in support like even as a manager uh, now in my like 10 years after. So it's pretty wacky that I came from like an art degree and now like I help manage like a, a team of like almost 30 people that wow. yeah, help a lot of people. So it's pretty <laughs> cool, but also wacky. I just think about it and the trajectory of it is very strange. <laughs> yeah, but that's cool though. I mean, it mm-hmm. seems like 
these days career paths are rarely linear anyway so yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and i i imagine that must be kind of a bonus honestly to have to build a customer support team and to have leadership that has all these diverse backgrounds like what is that like for you as a as a manager well i think it definitely we have the advantage in support where like i honestly think that support orgs are some of the most diverse uh like teams in a sort of i've I've worked at a ton of companies at this point like support is always the most diverse set of skills uh and and people that you see in a company i think just because of how many different kinds of backgrounds that you can have like i have someone on my team who uh, I mean, I have plenty of people on our team uh, who actually have never worked in support before, and like this is their first support job ever. Like, I have someone who's a little bit older, um, whose like main job was like, f- like she does newborn photography, and Flickr is a photography site, and she found like we were hiring, and this is literally not only her first support job, but like her first real job ever. <laughs> so, having someone who's just like this lump of clay, I would say, who's just like. She has, you know, no bad habits. And so you can kind of just mold her into having, like, being, like, a stellar support person because she's just, like, she's just, like, has really great instincts, right? And then on the flip side, I have someone who is, like, uh, worked at a startup before, um, was an intern, and then this is, like, and now she knows how to work with, like, developers and product people because she did that before at, like, her other job. So there's, like, so many different kinds of backgrounds, especially in the support team that we have at Flickr, which is, like, almost 30 people, all remote. Like, it gives you such a breadth of knowledge and sort of experience that, like, I've never really experienced in any other company so far. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I Yeah. And I can only imagine that, like, if you know, as you're constantly trying to solve new problems every day, that having all these different life experience, different viewpoints, that that's, I mean, that's got to just be a huge strength. Yeah. And I feel really lucky because, so I didn't, I like, to be completely honest, I didn't actually hire this group of people. I got hired on as the second manager with like a second wave of, we call our agent support heroes at Flickr. Um, They started the big push of hiring and like, uh April of 2019 and then I was with the second wave of people in June 2019 and it's interesting to sort of see like okay I didn't hire any of these people but like obviously I manage half of them now and see and just like teasing out of them what they like to do what uh what what their strengths are they're definitely like really ambitious people on the team that you you know what you need where they're like oh I saw a need and I filled it and now we have people who are like taking care of our help center and like our app reviews and you know they're they're the people who are like oh I want to like move up in this organization and then you have other people who are just like I like this job it's a paycheck but I like it and I clock in I clock out but I'm here to do a good job and like having and then there's people in between having the breadth of that to manage and also to like uh sort of pad out your team is actually the best thing ever because like you can't manage 30 people who are all similarly ambitious <laughs> i would <laughs> right. say and like you know cr- climbing all over each other to do tasks um and also you just can't have people who are completely passionless um and not, i'm not saying anyone in flickr is passionless but you can't have anyone who's just like well i'm here to clock in and like whatever like i don't care like you just we have such a good balance of like people who are like I love being a support hero. Like, this is cool. I clock in and I clock out. I don't have to take work with me. And then you have people who are like, I want to do more. I keep wanting to do more. I keep wanting to do more. Like, I love writing. Like, here's our style guide. I wrote it, you know, and like, we have nurtured, being able to like nurture both sides of that is like a really great managerial exercise and like also keeps you uh, sort of like on your toes as a manager too. And as a support org, because, like, we have so many different kinds of people. It's just, like, pretty interesting. And I manage a lot of them just to see how they take feedback or what gets them going or, like, you know, especially during the pandemic, what's been bumming them out. So, uh, yeah, it's it's so nice to have such, like, different people to manage and to be helping our customers. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I hadn't really thought of, thought through that side of it, but yeah, what it's like for a manager having so many diverse backgrounds, not only in personalities, but also like, again, like worldview, life experience, their education, and trying to figure out how to adapt your style to fit yeah, all of those it, different needs. <laughs> it's, I have to say, it's like, this is my first fully remote job. I was remote even before the pandemic. Like, Flickr HQ is in San Francisco. Smug Mug, our parent company, is in Mountain View. So, like, I never, like, I don't have an office, right? This is my office. <laughs> and so, and my team is is, like, around the world. Like, we have everyone from the UK to California, right? So I manage a breadth of those people. And even just, like, between the people, the two people I manage in the UK to, like, all across the country, just the way the diversity in location is really, like, I never thought that would be a factor, but it is, you know, just, like, especially when you manage people in New York. And uh, when the pandemic was hitting us hard, like, the emotional toll that was taking us us as New Yorkers has, you know, was really interesting. And then, like, as it spread throughout the country, like, dealing with that even, you know, like, as everyone hit, hit everyone differently, it's been such a interesting managerial exercise just to be there for your team emotionally and and like not even just as like a hey like let's get some feedback on some tickets that you did but also just like how are you doing are you okay like how's it going in california is everything like terrible not terrible you know like i had to do that with 13 people (laughs) you know and I, i manage a lot of people um it's it's been i feel like i've really leveled up as a manager just with the amount of different the amount of different personalities and how people uh what really turns people on in terms of like what they love to do like it's it's a re- it's it's fun for me but also like very draining <laughs> so, oh yeah yeah i bet do you <laughs> yeah in that process do you ever kind of see connections between um again, between your experience working at Starbucks, your experience with your your degree in like uh, wardrobe and costume design, do you see connections between those things and then how how you approach these managerial challenges as a support leader? Oh, that's a really good question. I think one of the things that I learned from working at Starbucks, and I attribute to this to like the manager that I had at the time, her name was Janisha, I haven't talked to her in 10 years. Shout out, I, she'll never hear this, but shout out to Janisha. She took time to do one-on-ones with literally every person at Starbucks like that she managed. That was like 25 people she was a manager of, right? Like she did, I don't know how she managed to do it. They were even, just like 15 minutes, just check-ins. And it meant a lot to me because it was always having someone to like, she would no judgments, listen to whatever was on your mind and be like, okay, cool. I, I, this is what I'm taking away from what you're, the problems you're having. Like, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Seems like you want more responsibility. This is what I lay out for you to like, you know, you want to get promoted to be a supervisor. Like we actually have a checklist for that. Like, why don't we see what you can work on? And it, was the first time where it clicked for me, like just having a manager who would just like listen to you and sort of like guide you gently uh, through, <laughs> through your problems and also just be like, well, have you considered X, Y, Z? Or, you know, she's completely professional about it, but she would still listen to you. Um, it, and like having that regularly, like she would never cancel one. She'd always just like, okay, I can't do it tomorrow. Like, let's move it to the next day or the next time I see you, you know, like at the end of your shift or whatever. Like the importance of that has like, I've carried that throughout my entire support career. Um, like even when I wasn't a manager, I just really liked having one on ones with with like my manager. And if they weren't useful, I'd be like, how can we make this better? You know, but as I became a manager, I made it my priority to make sure that uh, my direct reports had a space to listen. And so that was just something where I was like, wow, I'm going to take that with me no matter wherever I am. And and I think uh, the other thing that like I take away from like costume design and just um, like being in that world is just like quick problem solving. You know, like you kind of have to have a sense of resilience when you work in the movie industry because everything's moving so fast. Uh, you... Uh, 
are often cold and kind of hungry and like you are wheeling racks from one place to another you're dealing with kind of the ego of people in the film industry and like everyone's hustling and you have to solve problems without any ego <laughs> you know you just kind of have to do it and then you're like hey i'm proving myself and i think that's something that really aligns with working in sort of like a startup or even like even a more established company mentality is like how resilient are you and how much can you just like quickly solve a problem and help other people empower other people to solve problems very quickly um i i think that's something that um i feel like i've just like honed honed my skills in it's just like all right something's on fire like or like we need to solve this thing like let me just, let's just throw to use like you know that cheesy line is like let's just throw spaghetti on the wall and see if it sticks and then if it sticks cool and then we can figure out how to iterate on that you know that's that's like some of the stuff that i've really taken with me from like all of the things that i've learned from both the sides <laughs> yeah okay mm -hmm. cool um so yeah. as you know knowing that this has been your experience and it's worked out really well for you to have this like kind of mm -hmm. totally different background when um when you're hiring or if yeah so when you're hiring mm -hmm. um are there any specific backgrounds that you look for um yeah i'm just curious yeah. what that process looks like for you oh yeah um i anyone who's actually worked in retail i'm always keen to talk to at least and like do a phone screen because if you can survive in like a retail environment especially one for like like a like a high stakes one I, I not maybe not high stakes but like i interviewed someone once who like worked at the m m store in times square and i was for six years and i was like that sounds very intense and sort of like like times square m m store okay let's like talk and you know she was we didn't end up going with with this person but like it's I just know that that person has been through the crucible and probably has had so many like good customer stories, like quick problem solving on the fly. Like what happens when something goes wrong at the M and M store? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Um, retail and I um, often like pe like I we've hired like uh, teachers in the past too because if you think about it, teaching. Uh, is amazing it's an amazing career but it's, it's you that a teacher has so many skills that are applicable to customer support right like if you think about not only are you teaching kids kids are kind of their customer right mm -hmm. and their parents right and they have to balance sort of like this keeping customers their kids you know their students like happy engaged you know trusting them they trust the teacher so like i love talking to teachers and hire like looking at people who have like that background especially since like 99.1 percent of the time they're good writers because they're teachers right like you have to have a pretty good writing background to be at least in email support um and i know that they, they're quick like really good teachers are quick to diffuse situations and so it's like that avenue and like that worldview is so like we've had really good success with like talking to teachers who are looking to pivot their careers um and i think the other one is are just like <laughs> um are just like people who have been at sort of like not quite retail jobs but still customer facing like banks you know like we have someone on the team Who's, this is their first support job, but they were at a they were at a bank for eleven years, you know. And there's so much customer facing stuff, and there's like paperwork, and she, you know, uh, I can't describe to you what her job was at the bank after she was a teller, but like she did a lot of paperwork, a lot of like spreadsheet work, and like she wanted to initially become like she's like oh you know I was kind of thinking to like Code Academy, and then I saw this job, and then like I never thought I would love support but I do. And, you know, we've promoted her to a lead position. You know, she's only worked at the company for like two years. We've all worked at the company for two years, but like she, she got promoted like a year, like into her being a regular support hero into a lead position because she was such a superstar. She just like took things and ran with it, like realized that like, this is what she wanted to do so much better than her bank job. But like people who've been at roles like that, they 
especially with money, money's such an emotional thing, you know, like we deal with with photos on Flickr and like photos are emotional. Money is probably the most next emotional thing. So if you can deal with people in that capacity, I'm very interested in talk to you, talking to them about their experience and how they can like be a great support person. Okay. I'm yeah. curious to hear more about what you mean by it, like photos being emotional um, oh yeah and how that plays into interactions with customers so there's this thing they say at smug mug during training um which is like if you are to run out of the house your house is on fire and you're gonna run out of the house what are you gonna grab and like people are like their pets you know obviously their kids and then their photo albums when people had photo albums right because when you look at a photo it evokes memories, feelings, uh, you know, like sometimes you're like, look at a photo and you're like, you're transported exactly to that place and you can smell the ocean, you know, like it's such a, such a memory thing. That's like, you know, even when people, even on their phones, like if people lose their phones and lose all their photos, they're not backed up to the cloud. They like freak out. Right. They're like, uh, uh, like we recently asked a question, like, what would you rather lose? All of your money in one day or all of your photos in one day? And it was actually like a 50-50 split. People were like, I could take more photos, but like, I need my money. And so other people were like, I have no idea. Like, I would be so devastated if I lost all my photos. You know, so, and from a support perspective, like, you're dealing with people. And Flickr is a unique situation because we've been around for like, since 2004, Right. So we've been around for 17 years. People have Googled themselves and found that they forgot that they had a Flickr account that they made in like high school or college. And they were like, I really want to get back into this account, you know, and like it's or they're like, uh, I don't want these photos anymore. They're, they're like they're very like they're too sensitive for me to be on the Internet, you know. So like it's really interesting to balance like helping them versus like like sometimes we can't help them because like we've had such <laughs> you used to be able like in on Flickr you had you there was like what it was owned by Yahoo you had to log in with Yahoo email address like you had to and uh so many people don't have their Yahoo email addresses anymore so they can't like reset their password <sighs> it's such a it's it, it's it's an issue that's like very like I'm like oh man I want to get you into your account but I can't you know so you have to balance like I know that these are your memories but also like we can't we can't get you into your account. Like we, we can't verify you. Um, and you, and we have such an amazing photography community on Flickr. That's like the thing that I would say like Flickr has over like Instagram or anything like that. It's the community like, and groups. And like, if you like taking pictures of roller coasters, you can go find a group of people who like to take pictures of roller coasters too. And so like, there's such a passionate community on Flickr and like helping them and making making your team your support team understand that like these aren't just like oh these are just not they're not just like pixels you know these are people's memories and emotions and like giving them the best support that they can even when they have to say no it's been such an interesting like balance right because like the stakes are pretty high right these are people's photos you know like there are some like i have like 15,000 photos uploaded to my Flickr because I've had it since 2004. Like, I understand, like, I am a, I am a customer of Flickr. You know, I have paid for Flickr in the past now that I've, even before I worked there. And so, like, I understand that if I were to lose all those photos, I'd probably, like, cry a little bit for a day and then, like, move on a little bit, but still be a little bit angry about it. And, like, baking that empathy into, like, your training, you know, your feedback, uh, even in our help center, like, is has like a big priority for us because it's really important okay yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense i know i'm definitely that way about my photos yeah um yeah like i've had instances where i did not back up things to the cloud and a phone <laughs> like got ruined in a rainstorm and is a whole thing yeah <laughs> And I've and I've learned <laughs> that I'm like tripling back back up my like tripling like every backup of the photo like it's, it lives in three places and you know I if I'm I'm never gonna take the time to sift through those photos really I just am happy that the fifteen thousand photos that I have live in in places where I know that I can access them if the worst were to happen. 
Exactly. So. Yeah. So that's a good point that it is very mm-hmm. emotional. And so it, mm-hmm. yeah, it makes sense why you would turn to profession, like other professions where there's a lot of passion, like, especially with teachers, like, you know, that someone who's in teaching is passionate about their customers, yeah. like their kids. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense that like you would look there to help serve another customer base at Flickr that's also extremely passionate about the end product. Exactly. And, you know, we also have like a lot of amateur and and professional photographers on the on the support team, right? Like we have a couple of people who like I mentioned, uh, one of our support heroes who was a newborn photographer. We have someone else who was a wedding photographer, and we have someone else who does like amazing, like, uh, like landscape travel photography. You know, and so they already have that passion, and it's pretty cool that they get to like, they get to like blend their passion with like what at Flickr. You know, like just they have so much knowledge and and. Um, experience with this that they get to teach other parts of the team about like hey this is this is what Lightroom is this is what a raw file is like you know like the vernacular of photography can be really obtuse if you have no experience in it especially with like as passionate of a community as we have on Flickr like there is a little bit of ignorance when it when when if you start this job and you have no you have no idea what photography is really and like yes you've you've held up a digital camera yes you have used your iphone but like you know you don't know what an f-stop is you don't know what exif data is you know all this stuff and like having those photographers in on our team has just like really leveled up the knowledge that our team the rest of the team has because like they were able to put on trainings and just be like hey these are my photos like this is what this means and just like bake it into like our team meetings every week and it's been really cool to like once again like see these people like take what they love and share it with the rest of the team and also make it a learning experience yeah oh that's awesome is yeah is photography something you look for when you hire or is it just kind of a nice perk it's a nice to have yeah um on the smug mug side like they so Smug Mug is like the other side of our company. Um, I work for Flickr. I mean, we're all we all work for the same company, but like the Smug Mug support team, like they have their very like their tenure is like I think on average eight years. Like they have just have their their support org is very very experienced, and like I would say like eighty percent of them were people who loved using Smug Mug because they were photographers, and then they got hired. So like they like smug mug intentionally hired people who like loved photography and knew how to use smug mug you know and um on the Flickr side like we we did say like hey if you know anything about photography like that's a bonus or if you've had a Flickr account like i honestly think that me having my Flickr account since like 2004 was like a pretty good like it was like really nice on my resume when i like applied to Flickr. but yeah um I think one of the, like the photography piece is is like a nice to have, but it's something that we can teach, and also something where like as long as you can write and are empathetic and understand why people are passionate about this, well, we'll probably hire you, you know. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. Um, I kind of want to back up a little bit and just sure. and just kind of talk about why, in your opinion, why is why is customer support such a great career option for people from so many different backgrounds? Mm. That's a really good question. Um, And I don't mean that in a flippant way. (laughs) I think like, I don't know. I think if you work for the right company, it's very fulfilling in terms of your problem solving, which is, that is what a job is. In most jobs, you're just problem solving things, right? Um, And uh, you're making people happy, which always feels good. And I think there's, especially at an org like ours, which it was essentially a startup environment and a very stable company, there are so many avenues that you can take to express yourself or solve the problems that need solving or, you know, build a process that scratches the itch of your background, I think. You know, um, we have, you know, people who 
like I said, are photographers. And so they are really involved in like our community initiatives, right? Like I, we have, we have them like curating galleries, reaching out to people in groups, moderating our forums. There are people who, you know, and I think it's like also pretty stable, <laughs> you know? And I think that, um, you get to learn so much about writing, um, what, especially in like knowledge base or like help center stuff, right? Like what is the most efficient and friendly way to get people knowledge? Um, and I think that if you were like, have a creative writing degree or an English degree of, of people that we have, you know, like that, that really like, really like scratches that itch for writing for them. And, uh, and a lot of people who like say that you're kind of like, let me backtrack a little bit. We also have a lead who like got their degree in geology and, uh, that completely unrelated to support, right? Geology. Um, but what she really loves doing is like processes, process improvement, sort of like digging into data, like why something is happening. Like, why are we getting all of these negative CSAT? Like, why don't we dig into that for a quarter and see what the trend is? Like, that is really, really interesting to her. And I can trace that back to her being into geology, you know, like this, this sort of like the data driven, sciencey, crunchy stuff that like really, really interests her. Right. And I think that is really what is so interesting about support is because like, you can take so much of your background and apply it and you're not just in like a support bubble if you want you can talk to product people you can talk to engineers you're interested in like tech as a career like you can be someone on the team who is a liaison with our product team and see like what is being deployed like bring that back to the team um and so we'd really try at least at Flickr to to cater to everyone's interests and uh, if they're really great at like cross team communication, if they're really interested in that, like really set a place for them where they can do that sort of stuff too. Um, and thankfully, if like, we have the space to do it, we could just be like, okay, what are you interested in? Like, let's like come up with a plan for you. And like, I think so many people think support is just like, you sit at a computer and you answer emails and then you kind of like look at the help center and like, oh, you're on chat. Oh, you're on a call. Like, if your company is supporting you in your growth, there's there's something from whatever background you came from to really like, you can do it, you can apply it, you know? <laughs> so uh, I just hope that, you know, whoever's gonna watch this or listen to this, like really, if you don't have it now, think of ways where you can support the growth of your team because that's, they all have passions. They all came from different backgrounds. Those backgrounds apply. Like there's a, several ways that they can apply that into like a new, like a new role in support or like, you know, they can help you out and uh, fight for that support in the growth from your company. It's, and I'm happy to have it at Flickr. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious yeah. as for you as a manager, how, what are some ways that you do that for your team? How do you create that space for them to explore other interests or apply their interests? Yeah, that's a really good question too. Um, so, uh, there's like, I find there's like two ways is you find the people who are doing stuff already and sort of <laughs> like, let me give a good example. So, um, our help center was like very sad. And so, a t like one of our support heroes, Katie was like, Oh, and this other support hero, Jess, we're like, Hey, we want to like help redo it. We're like, okay. So like they, they kind of just like did it. You know what I mean? Like they, they kind of just like took it upon themselves to audit our help center, redo it. And we kind of just supported them through it. That was like a project we didn't tell them they needed to do. Right. Like I know we needed it, but like uh, they kind of took it under their wing to sort of, uh, make it better and like find a team to do it. And so listening to your team and being like, Hey, I think we need X, Y, Z, or they're like, Hey, I'm just going to do this thing and be like, cool, let's talk about it. You know, 
like I think that goes back to what I said of just like those ambitious people who are like I'm just found in like I found an, a gap and so I filled it you know like that is a one way to sort of uh gr- like help your team grow along is just like finding those people right it's a little bit harder for people who are like I want to grow but like I don't know how <laughs> you know um and that's where we um we came up with these and and by we I mean like smug mug as a whole came up with these like individual contributor like levels which uh our people operations team came up with where they're like it's different levels of just like uh communication collaboration leadership like problem solving it's like all of it's like this grid and then it's divided by level basically of like what are the skills that you need to be like if you're a support hero, you're like IC1. Like if you were support hero two, you're IC2. Like, so I did an exercise with a lot of my team being like, this is where I see you. And these are the skills that you need to move up to the next level. Like, what do you think? Like, where do you think that you need to contribute to or where do you need to grow? And they were like, oh, this is what I see myself as. Like, oh, I think I just need to be better at owning a process or owning something or like talking to engineers more. Like I want to do more of that. And so I was able to like, and our one-on-ones be like, okay, cool. Like, this is what I, like, I can't solve this problem for you. Like, you need to figure out, like, what is, what is interesting to you, but I can help you along. And, um, one of my direct reports was like, I want to do something. I, I need to, like, own something. And then she thought about it for a while. We did that exercise and she came back. She's like, I noticed that, like, all of our shortcuts, which are, like, you know, your canned replies. She's like, she's like, there's so many grammatical errors in them. She's like, I'm going to fix them with a the team. I'm like, okay, cool. That's great. You know, like, so she's taking that project upon herself now because like we talked through sort of, oh, you need to like collaborate more. You need to do this. Um, and so like, honestly, the, just like talking to them and being the guide rails for their interests is like the best thing. It's like, that's like the best advice I can give. It's just like, people are interested in stuff. It's just like, keep asking them about it like hey you interested in this or if an opportunity comes up like we needed we needed help for the for moderation for a community team and the community team was like we need like six people to help i was like poking different people who i know like they want more opportunities to shine i was like hey you should do that like you've talked to me in the past about like wanting to do that like you should try this you know i if it sounds boring that's probably even better (laughs) you know what I mean like to see if you can do this um so yeah it's it's all about like constantly making sure that you're in touch with uh the people that you manage and like I take a lot of notes I just like take and ask ton of notes about their interests and stuff so okay cool yeah that all makes a lot of sense yeah um well I think that's probably a good place to kind of start wrapping up um but Mm -hmm. before i ask you uh, my final question is there anything else on our topic that you would like to add that we haven't covered yet yeah i i think if anyone is searching you know i think there's a lot of talk about like dni diversity initiatives for hiring and stuff is um take a chance on unconventional resumes (laughs) You know, especially if they're like well written, their cover letters well written. If they come from a background that is uh, unconventional, I, I mean, I feel like retail is pretty like people like to talk to retail people, but like teachers, um, people who have been doing jobs like banks or anything like that, like definitely like talk to them because um, I think you know they bring a lot to the table that like people who have just been in tech forever do and like they'll probably have different perspectives and like i said before they probably have no bad habits and uh can can probably be shaped into like a stellar support person so as if you if you work at it too right like uh take give give people with unconventional resumes a chance that's what i say (laughs) oh i love that yeah such a good soundbite too yeah (laughs) (laughs) All right, perfect. Okay, mm-hmm. so last question. It's kind of a big one. Yes. Like, just in general, what advice do you have for up and coming support leaders? I actually wrote some stuff down. So, um, uh, there's this quote by Walt Whitman 
that I am not going to attribute to knowing before the show Ted Lasso. If anyone on the, who's listening has watched Ted Lasso, um, be curious, not judgmental, right? Um, and that kind of struck me as a manager because that can not only um, that like is something that you can apply to every aspect of being a support manager or a support leader. Um, to me, that means like, listen, and not only just like to your customers, which you should be doing, like, why are your customers doing X, Y, Z? Why are they writing in about this? Like, why is your inbound higher this week than last week? You know, uh, but listen to your team. Um, as often as a manager, like, especially in my case where I manage so many people, I'm like not in the queue all the time. I have like thinking a lot about big picture stuff, but taking the time to listen to your team and, you know, they know the customer the best, really, uh, and because they're in they're in that day to day, you know, answering the same questions, like listening to them, listening to what their problems are, you know, digging into why they feel a certain way um, is really, really important. And I think in my career that has led me to like really great solutions <laughs> when someone's like. I think a problem with this thing and it keeps happening. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. Like, let's talk about it. Like, why is that happening? And then we talk about it for 30 minutes and we're like, I'm like, okay, it sounds like this is happening. Let me talk to the other leaders on the team and see if anyone else is experiencing this. And we come up with like, oh, this, this, this modal is broken or like, we should change this modal and that will change our, you know, that will change everyone's like, our inbound will change. Right. So I think just being curious about why things are happening and, uh, is super important. Um, beyond that, though, I, I literally just wrote underlined delegate stuff. <laughs> that I feel like I've talked about this in so many other like avenues, but it's something that new leaders and new managers always struggle with. It's just like, if you get promoted or you're like in a new space and, you know, obviously it depends on your company and what you're doing often you become a manager and you still have to be in the queue because there's only two other people. But at the same time, like if you're in a bigger team, just delegate stuff. Um, It will give you the space to think bigger picture because you're not mired in what is uh, sort of like, uh, like you're not like mired with your customers all the time. Like, yes, you should pay attention to your customers, be customer focused, but like delegating uh, problem solving to other members of your team helps them grow too. Um, and people will solve problems in their own way. Um, th- the way that I usually do like take delegation is like, I use this analogy where like, okay, say we're in a bowling alley and your direct report is a bowler and they're about to throw the ball. You are not behind them, guiding them to throw the ball. You are the bumpers on the alley to make sure that they hit some of the pins or get a strike. You're gently guiding them on their way to make sure they're not screwing up. But, you know, they're ultimately the ones throwing the ball. So delegate stuff and help people, you know, with that delegation. And, like, I think once you delegate stuff, you just learn how to zoom out and, like, see the big picture. I'm still learning this, honestly. You know, I've been at this company for two years. I've been a manager for like five at this point but like still like, it is very tempting to be like what's happening in the queue like what's going on with our customers uh but like zooming out and seeing like what is the best what are the best decisions you can make to set your team up for success in like the next six months or the next year is something that like i'm learning and literally every day <laughs> and um helps your team be more efficient I, I don't really have many examples of like what zooming out really is. It's mostly just like looking at reporting and, you know, m- making sure the mental health of your team and the health of your team is good and seeing where like, okay, where were we the most busiest? And like, do we need to hire more? You know, like that sort of stuff and answering those questions. So you're not just like putting the tracks out as you're like barreling forward on the train, like really setting yourself up for success. Um, and those are like, mo- that's like most of my advice is, be curious, delegate stuff, and like learn to zoom out a little bit. So, perfect. Oh, I love that yeah. all so much. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> awesome. Well, just thank you again, Abby, for taking the time to do this. I loved this conversation. I think our audience will get a ton of really great insights from it. So, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Meredith. I had a blast. <laughs>